This week's sew along piece is the Sandy Scoop Short Knickers. So here we have the Sandy Scoop Short Knickers. So the front, the back and the gusset. And we're going to start pinning them together. Because we're using a knit fabric, I'm using some prim ballpoint uh, pins. We're going to start by putting the front right sides together. and the back right sides together. Going to pin along the centre back seam. I'm going to be sewing on the overlocker today so as always I am pinning outwards so that I can easily see and remove my pins before I actually get to the machine. So there's the centre back seam all pinned in place. And now it's just the centre front seam. The fabric I'm using today is an art gallery knit fabric. It's cotton spandex. Um, it's nice and soft. It's great for knickers. Okay, so center front all pinned, center back all pinned. I'm going to pop across to the overlocker and sew those two seams. I've got the overlocker set up as a four thread today. You could always sew this on your regular machine using a um, knit needle and a stretch stitch as well. So I'm not taking off very much as I overlock because the seam allowance is only one centimeter so we don't want to take off too much excess. Nice long tail and trim. Put that one to one side. we are we have the back and the front seams all gone we can just trim off our overlocking pull till it locks off trim again and the same again these are all going into other seams anyway but it just makes it a bit easier um, to do as you go as well I'm going to start with the front, so I'll just put the back to one side. So the front opens out and we're going to attach the gusset along here. So this time I've cut um, both the outer and the inner in the same fabric just because I could and because this fabric is very cotton rich so it works quite well. Just with the uh, gusset section you'll notice it is two slightly different shapes um, so if you get a little bit confused when you're actually um, working on it and not sure just grab your pattern piece and check it again um, to see which is the front and the back so this one's the front I'm going to take it fold it in half so I can find the center Pop one pin in that center line, open it back up again, and then when I place it on top of the front and its right sides together for this one, I'm going to line up my pin with my seam line, pop it in place, 
and line up the two outer edges. Pin. And pin again. So that's sort of step one of joining it. We want to do some enclosed seams. So just leave that one sort of sitting there for the moment. I'm going to take it the gusset lining, fold in half, find the center, pop in our pin. And this time what we actually want to do is we are going to make it right side to wrong side um, so that when we pull it out everything will be all enclosed so if that's not making sense just now it will in a, in a moment once we've sewn that seam so the first one or the outside is right sides together and the second one is wrong is right side to wrong side so if you haven't been sewing very long and you're not sure about right and wrong side right side means the side facing out in this side the printed side um, it's just the side which we want facing outwards to the garment. Okay, so now we've got the gusset pinned in place. I'm going to go to the overlocker and we're going to stitch that one before we come back and pin the front to the back. So we're just joining the gusset together and we're just going to make sure that everything sits nice and flat. And that we have all of those three edges all together. Take your pin out well in advance before you get to it. You don't want your pins anywhere near your overlocker blades. I'm just holding that bottom edge, making sure everything's aligned. Trim. And you can see that our seam is now enclosed. Here's the center front. We have our gusset on and everything is all enclosed. So the seam is tucked in nicely and everything's all covered up there. So now we're going to do the same but with the center back. So again I'm going to start by finding the center and I always find if you match from the center even if you've made a little bit of a mistake with your cutting um, and you're not you know super 100% accurate if you match from the center and go outwards you'll find that the balance is much easier to control um, and you're not going to end up with one side massively out or have any issues so we've got our two center points We have our center back, so we're going to go right sides together first, matching through the center. And you'll see with the ball, ball point pin, sorry, that's a mouthful, um, they just glide through the knits super easy so if you are sewing a lot of knits and you find that your regular pins are a bit grabby or you're finding it difficult do get some ball points they are really worth the money okay so we've got one side attached in order to get this so that we have another enclosed seam we're going to take our lining piece and we're going to flip it around so it's going to go around and line those center lines up again. So I'm just going to show you that again because uh, it's always a tricky sort of bit to see. So I have my center back out and I have my gusset all pinned in. So I want this gusset to come around towards the back. So if I pick it up at the center point and I hold the one I've already pinned at the center, and I flip them around and 
match at the center again. And then bringing your edges to your edges. So you only ever want to do one twist in this, not multiple, otherwise you'll end up with a twist in your actual garment. So just, just the once, just to bring it across. Okay, so it looks a bit of a hot mess at the moment because it's got this weird twizzle in it, but once we sew it, it will make all the sense in the world. So what you just have to watch is here, you can see the fabric's wanting to curl backwards. Just make sure when you sew it that all of those edges come together. So we're ready to sew this gusset seam. Make sure again that you've got all of these three edges all nicely together. Just double checking to make sure those edges are together and that this section here where my fingers are is all flat so that I'm not accidentally cutting a fold or um, have any excess fabric where there shouldn't be. If you're ever not sure about this and you're wondering about oh what happens if I've turned it the wrong way you can always baste it on your regular machine first. So here are our knickers directly off the overlocker we're going to pull so that this one goes back the right direction and if we've got it all correct what should happen is you'll have a fully enclosed gusset with no seams being shown and it'll clean edge on this side. So I'm going to trim off these uh, overlocking sections and then we are going to move on to doing the fold over elastic. So as I was trimming up the overlocking sections I've noticed that just here on the back side of the gusset, one side hasn't aligned up correctly. So I could unpick the overlocking and redo it and uh, make sure I've caught this in correctly. If you didn't want to do it, maybe you've got a really fine fabric that doesn't like being unpicked, you can also grab a pair of scissors and just take a little bit of that corner off and smooth the line back up. So as you can see, it's only a small amount I've taken off and ideally we want everything to line up all the time, but sometimes it doesn't always work out and it's always good to know that there is an alternative to unpicking all of the time that you can just sort of, you know, sneak a smidge off and it will still be okay, um, particularly if you're beginning uh, knits or new to knits. So just, you know, be aware of that. If it was bigger than that, I would definitely have um, unpicked it or if it was very uneven or affecting the shape of the garment, unpick, redo it. But, you know, know that there's an alternative available. So here we have the fronts um, laid over the backs, kind of how they'll look once the garment's actually finished. Because what's gonna happen is this uh, side seam doesn't actually sort of get properly sewn as a side seam, it actually gets overlapped. So when we're going to attach the fold over elastic, we're going to start at the top, come all the way around, and we're gonna finish off here at the edge. It just means you don't have to do a hard edge here with the fold over elastic. So if you start at the top, um, that helps quite a lot and you just sort of keep going the whole way around. So today I'm using a white fold over elastic. One side of mine is shiny and one side is plush. So I'm gonna keep the plush side towards the back. And you don't need to stretch it on. You just need to add like a little bit of tension. So if you're gonna pin it in first, just add in a little bit of tension. So if we think about stretch, and tension, there's a difference. When you get around the corner, however, though, in order to get it to fold around the corner, sometimes you need to just pull a little bit tighter 
just to get a nice smooth corner there. So it's always hard for me to explain that part while I'm actually sewing it because it's a little trickier. So I just wanted to point that out before I go to the machine and actually sew it. I'm not going to pin mine in because it's easier for me to not have to pin and talk at the same time when I'm actually doing the sewing. But if you are, I would definitely give yourself a little tail at the top, pin it in there, then start adding your tension, popping in a pin every so often. Um, it just, that can help you out, but you have to pin with the tension, otherwise it'll be too loose and it'll look all wavy once you've actually done it. Okay, so I'm gonna head across to the machine and we'll get started. Here we are at the regular machine and I've got my fold over elastic and I have my sandy scoop short knickers here. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna fold my fold over in half. I'm gonna pop it underneath my foot and I'm gonna make sure that here at the back where my thumb is, I've got a little tiny bit to hang on to. I'm gonna put my foot down and I'm going to do a few stitches. And all that does is help it glide through. And now I can take my garment, pop it into the fold, fold it over nice and neatly. What you wanna try and do is make the edge of your fabric line up to the pre-folded edge of the fold over elastic. So that little center line. All right, so we're just gonna stitch along. All right, so we're on to the actual fabric now so I need to uh, start adding a little bit of tension as I sew. And today I'm just using a straight stitch because the decorative edge of the fold of you don't actually need it to stretch for the garment to be worn. It's not like a neckline that might pop or something so you can actually just use a straight stitch. All right we're coming up to this curve I'm going to add a little bit more pull into the elastic while keeping the edge to the edge. Realign as we come around the corner. And you can just keep realigning and putting it in. And what we want to try and do is we only ever want to put tension into our fold over and never into our garment. So we keep our garment nice and soft. And we keep going around. So it's going to pause there. That way I can show. So now you can see it's actually gone around the corner. And we have a nice corner in there. And now we can just keep going. Learning tension in elastic takes a while, so don't be too hard on yourself if you're just starting out. Just take it easy, practice. Know that occasionally you're gonna get some wobbly bits and some wavy sections. All right, so I'm just gonna come up to where this seam junction is. So when we get through the seam junction, I'm just gonna hold the tension with my hand there, and I'm just gonna put a second hand at the back just to help guide it through. I'm not pulling at all. Yeah, and it's gone through nice and easy. These super soft knits are always great about going through, but sometimes you get something a bit bulkier or a bit slipperier. You just need a little bit of hand at the back there. Once we've got through those points, we just keep adding the tension stitching along. So here I'm doing what we refer to as one pass uh, fold over elastic where you attach it in one go. You can also attach it one side to the back then flip it forward um, as well. So I show that method in the sports bra 
video. So if you get stuck or need a little bit more help, you can check that one out as well. So as we come to the end, as I said earlier, we are not going to do that hard corner. We're just going to come off the end. And let's make it a little bit easy for ourselves. I'm going to come past the edge of the corner a little bit. But just as I come to the corner, I'm going to do my reverse. So it's going to come to the corner, do a few stitches of reverse just to lock that point off. And then I'm just going to come past it a little bit and cut off. So I'm just going to trim and you can see we now have fold over the whole way around. Here I've probably pulled a little bit too tight, it shouldn't have any puckers there on the corner, but I think it might relax. Oh yes it does relax a little bit, so that's kind of good, but you can see the corner is nice and smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side now. I'm not going to show you that one because it's essentially the same techniques all over again. And then we're going to come back and we're going to show you how to attach the side seams um, before we go on. Here we have our knickers and we have all of our fold over nicely applied all the way around the edges. It's a lovely clean finish um, and you can adapt it for other things other than uh, lingerie or underwear, great for necklines, um, t-shirts, things like that. So what we're going to do, the center back, uh, sorry, the back panel folds forward a little bit and the side seam comes over. So I'm just going to see what you can find is if you match the tops so that the top line becomes one continuous line you'll actually find the natural point where they cross over because you shouldn't actually be able to see this raw edge that will be tucked away underneath so it'll cross over like that if you can see that okay so once you've got that point grab some pins and I always like to pin my bottom section first to make sure that I've definitely got that raw edge tucked under. Pop a pin through there and one at the top as well. So what I've actually found works best for this is um, you can either do a zigzag here or a straight stitch again. I've been doing a straight stitch and going directly over the line that I've just done on my fold over and then doing a second line along the outside edge. Then um, the top I don't have to worry about because that's going to get uh, elastic added to the top. But here at the bottom, which is this junction point here, I've been doing like a little bar tack stitch or if you don't have a bar tack, just almost exactly where the pin is, just go back and forth a little bit with a straight stitch to give it some extra security. And it just stops that uh, seam opening up over time um, and enclosing it well. So I'm going to pin the other side and then we're going to go to the machine and I'm going to stitch those sections. Just sewing the side seam here. I'm just taking out the pin. A lot of layers there to begin with at uh, the beginning and my machine kind of just um, needs a little bit of a hand to get through it so just kind of a little bit of a push there. And now I'm just going to go nice and slow and I'm aiming to sew on top of the same stitch line that I just did with the fold over for no other reason than it looks really neat um, to do that but as I said, you can also just do this as one zigzag rather than two passes of straight stitch as well. Just going around the corner. Now I'm going to take this pin out here and you'll see that when I take the pin out, the back normally wants to kind of pull away a little bit. So you just have to make sure that you keep pushing that raw edge in underneath. And even lift to double check that you've got it before you finish off. So as you get down to the end here 
you could just finish off um, there and do a second pass. What can be super neat looking is to lift your presser foot, spin, lower your presser foot, come forward a few stitches. I'm going to reverse over that and come back again so that when I come back I'm going to finish so I'm still on the uh, on this outside edge of the fold over. I'm going to lift my presser foot, spin again and now I'm going to come back up. And it just makes it nice and neat. Um, and you know, one less thing, set of things you have to uh, trim as well. Okay, just come to the end, reverse and walk off. Okay, so now when I take that out, you'll see it's all stitched in place and that little corner just has like a little tiny bit. As I said earlier, you can also just um, zigzag across there or if your machine has a bar tack function um, you can go across there. If you're unsure what a bar tack is grab your nearest pair of jeans and have a look at the top and bottom of the belt loops that's a bar tack so some machines do a lovely little bar tack but that holds it secure as well and hopefully if I've got it right when we flip it over it's secured this back corner as well. So that's one side done. I'm going to do the other side, but I'm not going to show that because I'm going to use the same techniques and then we'll come back for the next step. At this stage, our knickers are looking super cute, um, but we need to add the elastic at the top for our last thing. So I'm going to use this cute strap one um, that I have from my stash. Um, and what I'm going to do, because I know this elastic, fold it in half, get the full width of the garment then I'm going to take it back by approximately five centimeters and I'm going to cut it off. Now I've worked with this elastic quite a lot so I know that this is going to work. I would 100% suggest grabbing the elastic, making a loop, putting it around your kind of low hip kind of area and making sure that it's not too tight and it's not too loose on your body. It's the easiest way to make sure that you've got the elastic correct to your size. So once you've got your elastic done, we're going to flip it over a little bit. So what you can do, there's a couple of different ways to finish off the elastic. You can just zigzag the two pieces together. You can butt the two pieces together and zigzag, which you see a lot in men's boxer shorts. And I, work, I like that, but if you've got a harsh washing machine, I find that that's not always the best. So my absolute favourite way is to roll one tight on the, the other. If you've got stripes, line up your stripes. Stitch down with um, normally a straight stitch or a zigzag, one of the two. And then fold it back and stitch down again. And then you end up with a really nice kind of finish. So once you've done that, I'm just going to pop a pin in and take the sort of seam allowance of the elastic out of the way. Once you've done that, fold it in half, find your center. Fold in half again, the opposite way, and mark with pins. Once you've got your four quarters all sorted out, you can put your um, join with its seam at the center back. And then you know to get uh, this uh, pin will be at the side seam, this one will be at the center front, and this one will be at the side seam. So each time when you sew, once you've got to here, you can just put the tension into there. And it means you get the correct amount of tension around the whole garment so that it's not all like loose, loose, loose. Oh, I've got too much stretch, stretch, stretch right at the end. So this way it's nice and even the whole way around. And when we apply the elastic, we want to fold it over so that it covers basically the stripe width, which is about sort of six, seven mil. 
I'm gonna go over and we're gonna join in here. So I'm gonna go set my machine up and then I'll stitch the back and we'll attach the elastic all in one go. Just getting ready to attach the uh, waistband elastic to the actual sandy scoop shorts. So I've got it lined up so that the uh, edge of the elastic is going in um, alongside the edge of the, the inside edge of this part of the metal part of my foot. I'm just going to drop it down and take out the pin. So I've got it overlapped so if I turn it up this way it overlaps by the width of my stripe which is mm, maybe seven eight kind of mil. All right I'm just going to get started Now that I'm over the joins of everything, I'm just going to hit the reverse button a little bit. That's it. Okay. So I just need to put in enough tension so that when the, I get to the side seam that the pin meets the actual side seam. So I'm just going to do that. Unfortunately, it is just off the edge of the camera because I just don't have enough space. But... If I relax it, that's sort of relaxed elastic and that's with the tension put in it. So I'm just going to keep, hold it part way so that my hands don't have to hold all of it too much. So I've just got it on a fairly wide kind of zigzag today. This plush kind of elastic can be very difficult to unpick. Um, so if you are not used to using it um, or you need to check whether you've got the right size or anything like that, I would highly recommend basting it in and then coming back with a zigzag because otherwise it gets a little tricky. I'm just going to pause there and check and see how it's all going. It's doing out pretty well. You can see the zigzag coming through. Ideally, I should have had an even wider zigzag um, than I've put in because I just think it would make it sit a little flatter. But you can see it's all caught in nicely on the other side. Um, you can also use a twin needle for this. Um, or a lightning bolt stitch or you could use a cover stitch machine as well okay i'm going to keep going around um, and just keep stretching and putting in that tension um, as i go the whole way around and when we come back next we'll see the finished garment so here we have them the finished sandy scoop shorts i hope you enjoyed baking them um, lots of new techniques with fold over and different kinds of elastic don't forget to go grab your pattern at measuretwicecutonce.com.au and don't forget to hit the subscribe so you can see when the next sew-alongs up.